if you're a gardener in the U.S., or even if you're not, you're probably familiar with the term hardiness zone, which is a map put out by the USDA that designates which zones are best for certain types of plants. However, all of this has just changed because the USDA just put out a new map for 2023, marking the first update in 11 years. Now, over half of the U.S. finds themselves in a new zone. So we're going to take a brief look at what the zones are, how they've changed, and then look at them side by side so you can see exactly what's changed for your part of the country. So the USDA hardiness zones are based on the coldest average temperature over a 30 year period. Note, this is not the average coldest temperature, it's the coldest average. So what they do is they take the coldest temperature in a given year for 30 years and average that out. That way you know for your region roughly how cold it's gonna get and you can know what plants to plant that will survive those temperatures. So this new map uses data from the 90s, the aughts, and the teens, whereas the previous map used data from the 80s, the 90s, and the aughts. And if you look at these two time periods, you can see there's been a significant jump. In fact, on average, the entire country has gone up about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit in that period. Remember, that's not the total temperature, just the coldest average. And since the zones are broken up into five degree segments, you can see why this is a big change. Additionally, this new map is a lot more accurate it's using over 13,000 weather stations as opposed to 8,000 in the previous map. Now you might think two and a half degrees is not that big of a difference, but in the garden, a couple degrees can mean a lot. Like the marigolds behind me, they conk out before freezing around 33, 34 degrees. Whereas this alyssum right here has powered through the light frost just fine. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the map and see what areas of the country have changed the most side by side. All right, guys, so here we have the overlay where the 2012 map is on the left and the 2023 map is on the right. Again, just to reiterate, the zones themselves have not actually changed, just where they are. Also, apologies that I couldn't get this overlap to be exactly 100% right. I think the maps are projected slightly differently. You can see on the east coast here, they match up pretty well, but by the time you get to the west coast, Things are a little misaligned, but we should still be able to see the zones pretty well. If you're here looking for a specific section of the country, I have those designated on the timeline, so feel free to skip around to wherever you need to go. Let's start up here in the northeast. The biggest things to note is that those pink areas, which are zone 3, have receded dramatically. Uh, it's no longer a thing in New York. Uh, otherwise, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine are mostly the same. You know, you can just see those slight shifts northward. Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island are pretty much pretty similar, which makes sense. You know, that coastal insulation is keeping things relatively the same. Same thing with New Jersey. Uh, slight changes there. Probably some of the bigger changes in the Northeast are places like upstate New York and Pennsylvania have lost a lot of their Zone 5 area. Uh, you can see what used to be uh, zone 7 was only around Philadelphia, is now pretty much all of southeastern Pennsylvania, and zone, six has, zone 6B has expanded quite a bit as well. Now if we go on down to the southeast, we can see a couple warming changes as well. Uh, probably the best example of this is Tennessee, where every single zone has pretty much gone up half a point. What used to be 6A is now 6B used to be 7A, is now 7B, and even have some 8 encroachment here that used to be um, 7B as well. The Deep South has pretty much lost all of its Zone uh, 7 area. This is pretty much just Zone 8 now, with Zone 9 coming in as well. Especially in Georgia, that used to have almost no Zone 9, and now that is really, you know, the lower third of the state almost. Florida, everything just moving north in general but you can see the introduction of Zone 10 down here around the Miami and Fort Lauderdale area. Otherwise, similar changes, just everything moving north. Now take a closer look at the Midwest. You can see Ohio has lost all of its Zone 5 area, the little that it had. Michigan and Indiana used to have large parts being Zone 5, and now a lot of that is Zone 6 now. Illinois, another great example of just the bands all moving northward in tandem, uh, so that's a good comparison. You can see Minnesota has lost its coldest, has mostly lost its coldest Zone 3 areas, uh, and then Wisconsin losing Zone 3 almost entirely. 
And again, everything just moving north. Iowa might actually be one of the states with the least amount of change. Um, so good for you guys. For the rest of the plains, you know, it's pretty similar in terms of you just see those bands all moving northward. Uh, in the Rockies, you can see places like Idaho have lost uh, their cooler zone fours. Um, some of the, you know, zone threes in Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado have gotten smaller or gone away. Um, and because, you know, these are the mountains, you're really going to want to check your specific area, but just as an overview. And then the Pacific Northwest here, you can see, uh, for the most part, things are pretty similar here. You know, Washington has lost its zone fives, mostly. You can see zone nine encroaching a little bit here on the coast. But yeah, Oregon, Nevada, Utah are largely the same. You can see in California, zone 9B has expanded a bit in the Central Valley. Otherwise, not a lot of change here. You can see in Southern California, um, zone 10 is growing quite a bit. But otherwise, not too much of a change. For the rest of the Southwest here, Arizona, New Mexico, not a ton of change. Just again, those zones moving northward. You can see Central Arizona has gotten a little hotter. Southwestern Arizona actually cooled down a little bit. And don't worry, Texas, I have not forgotten about you. You're just big, so I saved you for last. Uh, I know you like that. Uh, but yeah, pretty standard, similar to the plains. Everything just moving northward. Uh, you can see down at the tip of Texas, Zone 10 has gotten a bit bigger. But that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, Alaska and Hawaii, don't worry, I'm not forgetting about you. Hawaii, you're still tropical, stay beautiful. Alaska, you can see, you know, you're in two different spots here, so the wipe doesn't really work for you. Um, but you guys are smart. I'm sure you can look it up and figure it out. So yeah, I hope this general overview of how these zones have changed was helpful for you guys. Uh, again, that link for looking up your exact zone is in the description down below. So stay informed and good luck with your drone out there.